last week's revised episode, number 209, I showed you how to add authentication to this app using Devise. In this episode, I will show you how to add OmniAuth support to this existing Devise setup. This way, users can authenticate through third-party services such as Twitter or Facebook. Now, if you are unfamiliar with OmniAuth, I recommend you check out episode 241, where I add it from scratch. In this episode, I'll focus more on the Devise-specific details. Now, if you want to authenticate through Twitter, which I'll be demonstrating here, you need to go to dev.twitter.com and sign up your application. After that, they will give you a consumer key and a consumer secret, which you'll need to enter into your Rails application. All right, let's get started. Go into the gem file of this app. I will add the OmniAuth Twitter gem, and you'll need to run bundle to install it. Next, I'll go into the config initializers devise.rb file because here we can configure OmniAuth instead of adding it in a separate initializer. So I'll just enter a config OmniAuth line here for Twitter. And then I'm going to pass in the key and secret using environment variables, just call Twitter consumer key and uh, Twitter consumer secret, like that. So once that's configured, I need to go into my user model and add the OmniAuthable module into this device call. There we go. Once I restart my application, I can see that device magically added a sign-in with Twitter link on the sign-up page and the login page as well. But what if I want that link to be in the actual layout file so it always shows up at the top right here? So going into my layout file, I'm going to duplicate this login link and let's call this sign-in with Twitter. And this needs to go to the user OmniAuth authorized path that device sets up for us. And we need to pass in the uh, provider name as an argument into here. So this will be Twitter and that's it. And reloading the page and there's our sign in with Twitter link. Let's see what happens when we click on it. it takes us to the Twitter authorization asking if we want to give permission to access our account. We'll sign in with this account and then we get unknown action because we need to set up a controller to handle the OmniAuth callback. So I'll generate a new controller for this app and call it OmniAuth Callbacks. Next, I need to go to my routes file and tell Devise to use this controller in the Devise4 call. So I can do that by passing in a controller's option and setting the OmniAuth Callbacks controller to the OmniAuth Callbacks controller. So this option might seem a little bit strange, but we're basically telling it not to use the Devise namespace for this controller. So let's take a look at the controller and add some actions to handle the callback. But first, I need to change the superclass for this because it needs to inherit from the device OmniAuth callbacks controller so that it has a few other features such as handling failures. And now I can define an action here for each provider I want to support, such as Twitter. But I don't really like making a separate action for each provider if I have multiple ones because their logic is pretty similar on the controller side. The difference is more on the model side. So instead, I prefer to define just one action called all, and then I can use alias method to point any Twitter or any other provider I have to that all action. So in here, we have access to the usual OmniAuth hash of details inside of the request environment OmniAuth.auth hash. So I'm just going to raise this for now just to make sure that everything's working. So let's try signing in with Twitter and that should trigger that callback action. And it does, there's that exception with the hash content. So instead of raising these details, I need to either find or create a user matching that hash. So I'll say user.fromOmniAuth. So that's a method I'll need to make on my user model. Now, before I do that, I'm going to generate a new migration file to add some OmniAuth details to the user's table. And that includes two columns, one called provider and another called UID. So this way, our OmniAuth credentials will be persistent. Now, an alternative solution for this is to create a separate authentication model and store these credentials in there. The advantage is that a user can then authenticate through multiple different providers on that single user account. Uh, I don't think that added complexity is always necessary, so I won't be covering it here, but that option is there if you need it. Anyway, I'll migrate the database to add those columns. Now going to the user model, I can add that from OmniAuth method. I'm just going to paste this in here because it's not really specific to device. Here I'm trying to find a user with a given provider and UID that matches that OmniAuth hash. And if one isn't found, I'll create a new user with these given attributes based on the nickname provided by Twitter, setting that to the username. 
Now going back to the controller, we can complete the sign-in process for the user record that's returned. However, there is a chance that the validations have failed and the user record wasn't created successfully. So let's first to make sure that the user has persisted in the database and it must have saved successfully. Then we can complete the sign-in process through this method that device provides called sign in and redirect. And this takes a user model and we can have a flash notice saying signed in. However, if the user wasn't saved successfully, we need to redirect them to the new user registration page so that way they can complete the registration process and fix any validation errors. So let's give this a try. Signing in with Twitter again takes us back to that callback controller and this brings us to the sign up page because for some reason our user validations have failed. However, this doesn't display the validation errors which would be nice for the user. So we need to somehow persist these user attributes when validations fail. And I'm going to do that inside of a session. Now if we begin the session name with device dot, then device will automatically clean this up for us so we don't have to remove the session later. And I'll call this user attributes. And then I'll set this to that user's attributes hash. Now all we have to do is set those attributes back on the model and validate it on this signup form. Thankfully, device has a hook for doing this in the user model. All we have to do is override a class method on the user called new with session. And this takes a params hash and a session from the request. So this means we can check if we have a session called device.user attributes. And then if we do, we can create a new user record based on that given session details. But we don't want to run this through a mass assignment protection because we already trust this hash. So we can say without protection and set that to true. And then I'll pass a block in here passing in the user instance. And then I can set the attributes again based on the params hash, which is the attribute sent through the form from the user. And then I'll validate this user to ensure that it displays any validation errors. And if we don't have that session, then we're just going to call super. So that will fall back to the normal uh, device behavior, which is just creating a new user instance. Now, when I click sign in with Twitter again, it should take me back to the sign up form and it does with displaying the validation error. So this user record wasn't created because the email is blank and the password is also blank. And also notice by the way that the username was automatically filled in by the Twitter nickname. It's a nice side effect, it's really nice. And uh, anyway, let's make sure that the password isn't required when the user is signing in through Twitter. Now there's a method we can override on the user model called password required to override this behavior. And I'm going to fall back to the default behavior but also ensure that the provider is blank because if we are signing in through OmniAuth, then we don't want to require the password. Reload the page and now it only says email can't be blank. However, it would be nice if we hid these password fields in this situation where other validations fail except for the password. I'm going to do that inside of the device registration's new template that we generated in episode 209. So I'll just make sure in here that this is only displaying the password fields if the uh, user's password is required. So I'm going to go through the form builder object, which is a user record, and seeing if the password is required on that given a user record. And if it's not, then it will not display those password fields. And now reload the page, and now those fields are gone. So all we have left is this email validation, which we could perform the same thing here, overriding the email required method in the user record, but I'm going to leave this email validation for this application and just fill in my email address and sign up this user. And that worked, we've now signed up successfully. So let's try logging out and then signing in again through Twitter. And that signs us in as well. However, we didn't get our flash message saying we signed in. As it turns out, the sign in and redirect method doesn't support the notice option. So I'll just set the flash message separately like this. So now when I sign in with Twitter again, it displays our flash message, so that works. Now there's still one more problem with this application though, and that is when editing the user's profile. Uh, currently, to change something, it requires that the user type in their current password, but this password is blank, so leaving it blank will not work if we get this validation error. Now we can change this behavior by going to the user model and overriding this method called update with password, and I have some behavior like this, where we check if the user has a password, and if they don't, then we're just going to update the attributes directly, and otherwise we'll fall back to the old behavior, which we'll check to make sure that the current password matches. Now I'm also going to change the edit template to remove that current password field if the user currently doesn't have a password. So we'll say um, if the user object, which is the form builder object, uh, has an encrypted password, if it's present, then we want to display that field, otherwise we'll hide it. 
And now when I go to edit the profile, we can change something without a problem. And that wraps up this episode. Users are now able to either sign in with Twitter or sign in through a traditional login and password with a, the normal device setup.